Hi everybody, Tom Guile with the Guile Group. Today is Friday, August 21st. I'm bringing you the latest Guile Report with the latest economic and real estate news for the Portland metro area. Are all markets the same? We're gonna dive into that this week and take a look at the Portland metro area and along with a, a number of different sub-markets across town to see if these markets actually act the same as one big market or if Portland metro real estate is actually made up of a bunch of little sub-markets all acting independently. With 2.5 million people in the Portland area, Portland's pretty diverse, so this is a great question to go take a look at. Taking a look at the leading indicators here in Portland, continuing to show positive signs in the Portland real estate market. I think one of the bright spots we're definitely seeing, uh, the new listing activity. New listing uh, continue to trend in a positive direction, which is great news because inventory is super low right now, as we've been talking about over the last several weeks. Uh, inventory in July was at 1.2 months. Uh, a balanced market is more in the four to six month uh, period of inventory, so really tight inventory. So new listings are definitely helping things out here a lot. Uh, 753 new listings last week in Portland, that's up 8.7% from the week before. Pending sales uh, are slowing down just a little bit, uh, down at 683, down 2.1% from the week prior, uh, but we're still seeing very robust activity in, in terms of showings. Uh, lockbox opens are uh, over 23,000 lockbox opens last week, that's up 1.1%, so steady activity there in the lockbox uh, area, which is indicating uh, steady showings. So these graphs here, graphs here lay out the uh, just how things look uh, through time here. And like I said, listings have uh, surpassed the amount of sales here for the last week, which is good news. It's going to help uh, build some inventory up. And lockbox opens have uh, uh, they've kind of leveled off over here over the last couple of weeks, but still very robust. Changing gears and taking a look at a historical perspective, uh, new listings are up 18.2% compared to this same week last year. So listing activity is very strong. Uh, pending sales up 33.4% over 2019. So let's just take a pic, uh, take a look at these pictures and see what that really looks like here. So as you can see, new listings, we've crossed over that line of uh, compared to where we're at last year. Typically, we see listings in the market in general start to cool off a little bit in August. Uh, we're not quite seeing that. What uh, we're seeing is really what appears to be some delayed reaction from what happened in uh, April and May, just due to COVID, the whole market seems to have shifted. So we're seeing some very robust activity here, uh, continuing on here into August, a period where things typically slow down a little bit. If you take a look at the pending sales here, you can see we're well over where we're at last year. Um, and I took a look at the year-to-date numbers. We're 7% above last year, year-to-date uh, for pending sales. So very robust uh, pending sales into sales activity in general here in Portland. Median home prices, we've been tracking this here for weeks. Um, we definitely are starting to see an uptick in the median home price here in Portland. Uh, as we got into COVID, things did be, seem to be pretty level. They dipped down a little bit in the beginning of June, but from then on, we've seen some pretty, pretty steady increases in what the median price is here in Portland. Last week, that median price was $500,000. I think what we saw happen is as buyers returned to the market uh, at first, we were uh, seeing more buyers in the low end, low price points of the market. Now we're seeing buyers across the pri uh, price points uh, buying homes here in Portland. That combined with the limited inventory has had a very positive effect on prices. So let's talk about his, uh, historical Portland here for a moment. This kind of lays out just where we're at price-wise year over year. You can see that uh, uh, 2020 is still trending higher than we have in previous years. We're up at 471,729 is the average price year to date. That's up 3.5%. And uh, you can see sales here have definitely after a, a little bit of a stall out here at the beginning of COVID, it just it continued this uh, to direct trajectory upwards. Inventory hit a low of 1.2 months. It's the lowest we've seen since December 2015. So inventory is definitely tight here in Portland, but hopefully with more listings coming on, we'll see some relief there. Now let's take a look into the individual markets here and see how they perform relative to Portland. Um, so I'm taking a, taking a look at some of the major markets here. Uh, one is Beaverton. An interesting trend here in Beaverton, you can actually see that prices have remained relatively flat and actually have uh, decreased a little bit uh, since about February, March of this year. I attribute that to just the tight supply of inventory that we have in Beaverton. Uh, there's less than a month's worth of inventory. We're at 1.9, excuse me, we're at uh, 0.9 months worth of inventory. That's the lowest we've seen since 
uh, late 2017, early 2018. So inventory continues to be a really a, a limiting factor in Beaverton. Uh, we're also seeing that just in the overall sales number, the volume is just not quite where it's been in years past. Uh, Tigard is a little, uh, definitely behaving differently here. If you look at Tigard's pricing this year, it's been well above uh, years past here. Uh, seeing some uh, pretty steady and uh, consistent price growth in the Tigard area. Um, taking a look at the average, excuse me, we're looking at median price here in Tigard, it is $460,000. That's up 8.1% uh, over, over this same time last year. And sales in Tigard, again, kind of mirroring what we're seeing here in Portland. We definitely had a downtick in April uh, as things slowed down and it's just been on a steady climb since. Uh, Lake Oswego is definitely interesting to look at. It does not behave like the rest of the Portland metro area. One of the big things about it, take a look at inventory. It's at three months, which is much higher than what we've seen in other cities around Portland. Um, and that has to do a lot with the price point of what we have in Lake Oswego. Uh, median price in Lake Oswego is uh, $659,000 uh, year to date. And that's up 10% from the, almost 11% from the year before. Take a look at Lake Oswego in general. Pricing remained pretty, uh, just kind of mixed here for the last several years. Uh, just not seeing a lot of increases here, although we're seeing a definite uptick here in the last couple of months, which is pulling up some of the, uh, the median price numbers we're looking at here. And also sales are definitely uh, taking a very sharp trajectory. Uh, starting in May, so I've got a little bit later start, like I was talking about, that higher price point seemed to be a little late at recovering compared to other areas, but taking a big ride up here. So I think this answers the question. We're really, Portland, uh, we look at it a lot of times as one big market, but it really behaves as a number of individual markets. They all have their nuances. It has to do with price points. It has to do with neighborhoods. It has to do with amenities. Uh, you know, how close are you to jobs and things like that? How close are you to recreation? And all these markets behave a little bit differently. If you have any questions about your neighborhood, uh, ask the Guile Group. You can send us an email at askguilegroup at guilegroup.com or uh, give us a call or uh, shoot, me a, shoot me a text. We'd love to interact with you, talk to you about it. Also check us out on social media. You can always DM us there on social media if you have any questions. We'd love to hear from you.